Well, good morning, ladies, and welcome to Learning to Listen. Uh, we are super excited to be here with you today. I'm Claire, and I'm here with my good friend, Linda. And we just, we're excited today because we really <clears throat> feel that we have a message that is going to change someone's life here today. I know that, you know, even as we talk, like Linda and I, our lives are being changed by what yes. God is saying today. And so, um, yeah, I, I just, I think I'm more excited about this um, message that God is putting on our hearts for you than I have been about many things <laughs> in a long time. Right, Linda? Yes, yes, it is. It is It is a, a message that we need to hear. And I think it's something that we have talked on before, but we just feel like we just really need to to hone in on it again. So, and we've kind of we've been talking about authority for the last couple of weeks, um, and and I guess that's just something that we feel has to get. We have to know this. This has to be in our spirits. We have to be walking in this authority. And and you know, I woke up early this week and and I said to the Lord I said I want to be a, an authority on spiritual authority and and I chatted to Linda yes that's what we want to be we want to walk in that authority we want to walk in knowing who we are in Christ do you know and and knowing the power like the love and the power of Jesus Christ as yeah. As you can see in the book of Acts, you read the book of Acts, mm -hmm. you read the Gospels, there's the love and the power of Jesus through and through the whole of it, you know, so that's what we want to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, we've both been reading this book, uh, we came across this book, which we highly recommend. Um, yes. And it's by a man called John Raymer. And he has a quote in it that that just took us both of us uh, our breath away and it stuck with us and that quote is spiritual authority is rooted in identity established in intimacy and activated by faith and I'm going to say that again spiritual authority is rooted in identity established in intimacy and activated by faith and for yes. for the both of us, this has been, it's been revelation, right? I think that, yes. yeah, absolute <clears throat> for, for both of us. And just knowing that God is speaking, God is saying something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was looking up a scripture um, in Genesis, as far back as Genesis, as far back as the creation of, of the world, the Lord, um, God says that God made man in his image. In Genesis 127, it says that God made man in his image. He created them, male and female, in his image. That is who we are. Yeah, We are made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not God, but we are made in his image. And so that is the truth of who we are. And so identity being able to walk in the authority that we talk, we we have been talking about, and the things that Claire and I are talking about, and continuing to learn about authority, is identity is so so key, and um, so we just felt like today that this was something that we needed to talk about um, for, because that's really where it begins mm -hmm. is knowing who we are in God, and it's more than. <clears throat> you know, just coming, it's more than what we do. It's more than um, what people say. You know, it's not what the enemy says. It's what the truth of the word of God says that we are. We are created in his image. And so the, the, the power and the authority that we walk in because we are created in his image is so important for us to know. And the love and yeah. the love that um, he has for us. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you put it that way, Linda, you know, 
we are not God. We are not right. God. And, and and we should never aspire to be God. And and I think sometimes, you know, in our little lives, we kind of act like we're God. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we're not no, we're not. We are children of God. He created us with love. We are made in his image. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, you know, sometimes you just have to sit back and let that wash over you. You're yeah. made in the image of God. That's awesome. That that is so awesome that he loved us enough that he made us in his image. That's our identity. We're his children, you know. We're made, we're fashioned by God, even you know, to the point created um, before time began and create he knew you in your mother's womb, you know. He fashioned you, he created you in his image. And that's where we get our identity from. It's from his love, you know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Love the way you put that. Yeah. Yes. Identity is not about what we, you know, I kind of touched on this a little bit. It's not about what we, who we feel we are. It's not about our feelings. It's not about what we do. It's not about what we haven't done. It's not about the sin that we we're in. It's about um, the truth of God's word. God says in his word who we are. We are his children. We're a royal priesthood. Yes. We're, we are um, disciples. We are part of his kingdom. He has adopted us into his kingdom. That's who we are. Yeah. And when we look to Jesus, when we look to how, when we look at Jesus, Jesus identified himself with the father. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I and my father are one. I do all that my father says that it was his identity. And that is what our identity is. Yeah. And um, you were talking earlier about the word, how we have to be in the word to know what our identity is. Absolutely. And, and you kind of said it a little yourself, you know, uh, we need to know the truth. And um, so we were just talking earlier about the scripture. Um, and in Luke, Jesus is talking and he says, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching or another version is if you abide in my word, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We cannot just pull truth out of full, like out of thin air, you know, and sometimes we do. Well, I know the truth and this is the truth about this and this is the truth about that. But we have to be so careful these days because it's hard to find truth. The only way you're going to find truth is in God's word, is going back to his word and saying, what does God say about me? As Linda said, you, you know, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You belong to God. You are his. You are his child. You are a woman of God. Because that's what God says about you. That's the truth that's in his word. And you will only know that truth if you get down into the word of God and look for it, you know. We're so blessed in this day and age that I can go and Google, you know, what does God say about me in the word? And there'll be scriptures that'll just pop up. But I think, you know, Linda and I said, Make sure you, you're you looking at them in context, um, because yeah. even that scripture, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You have to, the whole sentence that Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So make sure you're grounded in his word so that you know who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The word is what will um, tell us who our, what our identity is. Identity is. And, um, you know, I think that we are, um, and we are, we need to know, like, like Claire was saying, we need to know the word. We just, we have to know the word to be able to, because it does tell us in, in that who we are. It, like, like Claire said, we can't just say who we are out of thin air because that's not truth. That's right. And so we, we have to know, we have to be in the word. And I think of how old the word is, you know, like they've Mm -hmm. got scrolls that are thousands of years old. This is truth going back thousands of years, ladies. You know, it's not an article on 
uh, on your computer or on your phone or on Facebook. Right. You know, this is what God said. And there's such a weight to that. There's a weightiness to God's word. And, you, you know, I just love, like I was thinking as uh, Linda was talking about my kids, you know, child of God. And and I thought, you know, my son is 32. I adore my son. And they'll come here and visit for quite a while. And I'll often come in the kitchen and my son's head is stuck in my refrigerator. He's looking for <laughs> something to eat, you know. And, and when they sit down for dinner, they sit wherever they want. They know they can do that. But when I have visitors over, they don't do the same thing because they're just a visitor. Well, most of them don't. Though I just had Bob and Linda over and <laughs> maybe most of them don't. <laughs> no, but, <they're> family. <laughs> but seriously, you know, they, they know they're at home. They're in my house. They can help themselves. They know I'm going to provide for them. I'm going to put <clears throat> to come in and my granddaughter, I'm putting good things in that for them you know mm -hmm. and things that will spoil them things that they want not necessarily that they need and that's the mentality that we need to have I'm a child of God I can come into his presence boldly because I'm family I'm family I can sit with him I can talk with my Abba father I can ask him for things I can access things because I'm a child of God. That's my identity. I'm rooted and grounded in love. I'm a child of the King of Kings. So I, I was just thinking about that. That that is just so true. We don't often think of ourselves as family when we think of the Lord, when we think of the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But the word says that we are his children, sons and daughters. He's adopted us into his family, into his kingdom. And um, you know, so that's a, that is a real um, important piece. And um, I was just thinking when you were talking that, um, you know, whenever our children, they know that they belong to us. So they can come into our homes and do, you know, what you were saying. They can come to us when they need us. And, you know, that is their identity that they know that they are children they are our children. And um, so, you know, that's, we know when we come into the kingdom, we are God's children. We may know it in our heads and not in our hearts, but we need to keep speaking who we are. Mm -hmm. And it eventually becomes a part of us knowing that in within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is getting, you know, I heard someone say recently, like if we truly understood how much God loves us yeah. and we would act and live our lives from the place of knowing how loved we are, wouldn't our lives be different? You know, wouldn't our reactions even be different? I know that, you know, when when you face criticism, sometimes you can be really defensive. I know I can. But if I was acting out of a place where I, of the knowledge of who I am in Christ and how much he loves me, would my reactions be different? Would the way I would behave be different? And I really believe we would if we, we just could know our identity in Christ, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's real important. There, you, there was a scripture that you read about the love of the Father. Yes. And so I love the scripture and it's mm -hmm. just been on my heart for weeks. And it's in Ephesians. Ephesians is one of my favorite books, you know. It's really good. It's a beautiful book. And, and the way Paul writes. Um, and in Ephesians 3, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love would know the depth of his love for you. And it goes on to talk about if you're rooted and grounded in love, you'll understand just how much he loves you. But I couldn't get away from the rooted and grounded. 
how we need to be rooted in his love because if we are rooted in his love then what's going to grow out of us you know what's the tree that's going to grow out of us it's going to be love because that is what we are established in that's what that is our foundation love is that foundation and I could just see a picture in my head of this root system that is grounded in love and this beautiful tree that grows out of it with fragrant flowers and full of fruit because it's established in love. But then I saw this one little root, cheeky little root, go off to the side and root itself in unforgiveness. And, you know, it started sucking up that unforgiveness and it totally poisoned the whole tree. That whole tree became just bitter and twisted. And I thought about all the things that we can be rooted in. We can be rooted in hate and malice and pride. That can be where our root system is. And we don't want that, ladies. We we want to get rid, chop off any of those little roots that are going sideways into hate or into other yeah. things. Because all we want to be is soaking in the love of Jesus Christ and understanding that if we are soaking in that, then we're going to be this fragrant tree, you know. And, and so that was, I just thought that's where my identity comes from, understanding his love, being rooted in his love. We need to know that. We need to know that we know that we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, that is a really good, when you were talking about the tree, you know, um, when a seed is planted in the ground, whatever that seed is, is what comes up. What, you know, say it's um, uh, a gr uh, grapes, it, it's not a tree, but um, a grape seed yeah. brings forth grapes cherries bring forth cherries apple trees bring you know bring forth apples but if something were to happen to make that um if there was something that got into the root system so you know it, it's it's really um important to be grounded in that love because that is what's going to come out yeah. when yeah. it when it grows and it's funny you know with a seed when you have a little seed and you put it in the soil and you cover it over with soil you can't see it you yeah. water it the first thing that grows are little roots and those little roots yes. to establish this little plant mm -hmm. so, and, and, and it's a while before that little plant pops its head off you know it's just in the secret place it's growing its little roots it's with the lord in that in that you know intimate secret place and then it grows and, and that's how we need to be we need to right. Be with Jesus in that secret place and, and growing. Make sure our roots are are good, strong, established roots rooted in in, in the right nutrients. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very true. Yeah. Um, we we're talking about identity. You know, would you read that that um, quote again? Uh, absolutely. I just feel like it's important as we um, close that you would re read it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know this. I, I think the thing that we ultimately want to get to, um, and, and we're going to talk more about this in coming episodes, is spiritual authority. Yes. Are we walking in that? We need to walk in that. We need to know that we can tell the devil to flee and he will. We need to know that. We need yes. to know, you know, what we have authority over our children, our households, our marriages, mm -hmm. our health even. And, and this is something I need to learn because those are some of my battles mm -hmm. with it too. We, we need to learn this. We're learning with you. And, and so we do believe God is doing something. Um, so so this quote um, from uh, Rob Raymer, Rob Raymer, I'll, I'll put Rob. it up. Um, yeah, anyway. Rob Raymer. Mm -hmm. It is spiritual authority is rooted in identity, established in intimacy and activated by faith. Yeah. No. So we need a, um, a rooted in identity. Yeah. A established in intimacy and activated. activated by faith so we need we need identity intimacy and faith 
yes. to walk in the, in this time of authority. So our identity is the it is the is these are the foundations of authority. Absolutely. If you think about it, these are the foundations. Identity, intimacy, and faith are the foundations of the authority that we are talking about, that we're that we talked about a few weeks ago. And so, um, you know, that is the thing that we are um, wanting to um, understand is this identity. I want to end with this um, scripture. Jesus knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Jesus completely knew who he was. He was God, and he, but he was human, but he completely knew. And in um, John 10, 30, he said, I and the Father are one. And he did only what the father showed him to do, told him to do. He, and you know, we're one with Jesus. We're one with Christ. The Lord tells us, the word tells us that we have the mind of Christ. And the word tells us that we are one with him. We are his children. We are, this is the truth of who we are. Mm -hmm. And that is the things that we need to listen to and take into our hearts and become believers of. And so that is the message that we wanted to share today is that our identity is in him, yes. is in the truth of the word of God. Yes. And um, so uh, shall I pray? Absolutely. Yeah. That's... Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you tell us, you created us in your image, mm -hmm. and then you tell us who we are. And Lord, I pray that as um, women listen to this message today that they will be able to grab a hold of the truth of who you say that they are God of what you've said in your word of um, who they are not what other people are saying not what they're feeling and not what the enemy is saying God I pray that they would grab hold of who you say they are Lord, I thank you for who you say that we are. I thank you that we are your children, that we are daughters of the most high God. And Lord, that we're, like I said earlier, we're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We're disciples. God, we are the glory of your um, name. And so, Father, I thank you as we glorify you, um, that you are um, you are the king of of our identity <laughs> you are the truth of our identity lord and we thank you father and we bless you and we honor you lord for it's in jesus name we pray amen 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 and i just want to close it off with a challenge because i thought of one while yeah. i was praying <laughs> and just say ladies today i challenge you to go dig in his word and find yes. out who you are and to cast off any lies of the enemy. Don't believe what the enemy says. Don't believe what he says you are. Believe what's in the word of God and stand on that truth. I am a child of God. I am chosen by him. I am accepted. I am accepted into the beloved. So that's my challenge to you this week. And we will talk about this a little more next week. So we look forward to seeing you then. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.